Hello everyone. Now we will discuss about the topic called round robin scheduling without consideration of arrival time. As I earlier said, round robin is a preemptive scheduling because it will allocate certain time to the processor. Even the process may complete its job or may not complete its job, the control will transfer to the other process. So it does not worry whether the process gets completed or not. So it stop the process, current process and it will go to the other process. So then that's why we can say that round robin is a preemptive scheduling. In this example, we are going to discuss about preemptive scheduling, pre round robin scheduling without consideration of arrival time. So which means what all the process arrives at 0th millisecond. So here we are considering three process P1, P2, P3 and burst time of three process 24, 3 and 3 and all the process arrives at 0th millisecond. Okay. Now we will discuss about how to draw a gang chart. See here at 0th millisecond the process P1 arrives. So what I said like I asked you to give the time quantum. The time quantum is a very important factor in a round robin scheduling because based on the time quantum it will stop the process and it will go to the other process. In this example I am considering time quantum as a 4 milliseconds. Okay. So from 0 to 4th millisecond process P1 will execute and it, the control will transfer to the other process but the burst time of the process is 24. So it will work from 24 it will work 4 milliseconds so rest 20 millisecond jobs are left in the process P1. Now the control will transfer to P2. P2 actually needs 3 milliseconds to complete its job but the time quantum is 4 milliseconds. So if the burst time is less than the time quantum it's not an issue. So from 4 to 7 P2 will allocate the job. After completing its job it will move to the process P3. P3 will also have a burst time of 3. So from 7 to 10 the process P3 will execute. Now in the first cycle still 20 milliseconds of P1 process is left. P2 completes its execution and P3 completes its execution. So now we will come to the second cycle. From 10 to 14 P1 will execute. So again 4 millisecond jobs will execute. Now 16 milliseconds jobs is left out. Okay. Then if the control will go to P2 it actually complete the process. P3 it actually complete the process and again it will check. Then again from 14 to 18. Sir only one processor arrived. Can I draw directly from 10 to 30? No. So you have to give the time quantum. So your gang chart should be the diagrammatic representation how the process gets executed. So from 10 to 14 so after completing the 4 milliseconds it needs 16 milliseconds, 16 more milliseconds and again from 14 to 18 again the process P1 gets executed. So still 12 milliseconds jobs are left. Again from 4 time quantum, again 4 time quantum and again time 4 quantum. So it completes at 30. So check here 24 plus 3 plus 3 it will gives 30. Here also it will gives 30. So which means every time it preempt the process and it will check whether any process are arrived or not. If there is no other process then it starts executing. So this is the concept of round robin scheduling. Now we will calculate the completion time. As a earlier shirt, how will you calculate the completion time? I have to move from the right hand side. From here the completion time of process P1 is what? There are so many completion times but I have to give, take it as the right turn. So 30 is the completion time. What about process P2? Move from here. P2 has 7 milliseconds. And then what about P3? P3 means 10 milliseconds. How can we calculate the turnaround time? You know that the time sorry the time interval between the job submission and job completion. So job submission is arrival time and job completion is CT. So CT minus AT. So the completion time is 30 minus arrival time is 0 which is gives 30. What about P2? The completion time is 7, arrival time is 0 so which is equal to 7. 
what about process p3 the completion time is 10 minus 0 which is equal to 10 what about the waiting time of process waiting time of the process total turnaround time sorry turnaround time minus burst time so the turnaround time of process p1 is 30 minus burst time is 24 so it has 6 milliseconds what about the process p2 the turnaround time is 7 and the burst time is 3 which gives 7 minus 3 which gives 4 what about process p3 10 10 minus burst time is 3 which gives 7 milliseconds so these are the waiting time of the process and these are turnaround time of process and you know how to calculate the average waiting time the turnaround time of each process divided by total number of process the total number of process is 3 because p1 p2 p3 there are 3 process so waiting time of process p1 is 6 waiting time of process p2 is 4 and waiting time of the process p3 is 7 which gives 17 divided by 3 which it roughly gives around 5.666 it will go on so 5.6 milliseconds what about average turnaround time so turnaround time of each process divided by total number of process the total number of process is 3 the turnaround time of process p1 is 30 and turnaround time of process p2 is 7 and turnaround time of process p3 is 10 which is gives 47 so 47 divided by 3 this will also give around 15.6 milliseconds so this is a way you have to calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time and the diagram is very important every uh, time interval four time interval the process will preempt and it will start executing don't simply draw from 10 to 30 the process p1 occupies in this example there are no other process in a preempt way so that's why from p1 p1 4 again p1 again p1 the order arrives like that okay so this is the way to do the round robin scheduling without consideration of arrival time thank you